gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to the PMRC debates. Uh, today marks a very special event. Uh, PMRC, in collaboration with uh, Society for Family Health, are co hosting this intriguing high learning institutions debate. The thrust of uh, today's debates border on uh, sexual and productive health and good health care generally. We should recognize that debates are a critical advocacy medium that uses critical thinking to evaluate ideas and share information. Uh, debates as a critical skill is more important now as we live in an information age where information is power and debate is a medium to actually communicate that information. Having said that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we must understand that uh, sexual reproductive health is an essential component of the universal right to the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and in other international and human rights conventions, declarations, consensus agreements, and uh, global commitments in general. Sexual and reproductive health needs must therefore be met for both male and female. And this event today contributes towards such efforts for Zambia. It gives me great pleasure to officiate at this year's uh, students' debate competition involving four tertiary institutions, um, very, prestige, very prestigious institutions indeed, the University of Zambia, Apex, uh, NIPA, and Eden on College, co-sponsored by Society of Family Health, and Policy Monitoring and Research Centre. We realise that it is only through healthy debates among students like this one we will be able to educate one another on HIV self-testing services in Zambia. I'm reliably informed that there are thought-provoking topics that will be discussed uh, this morning and the subjects among them which are whether HIV self-testing mechanism is a tool, is an effective tool or a danger for mankind, usage of female condom versus preservation of Zambian social norms, as well as the effectiveness of health sector strategies and policies. Ladies and gentlemen, we recognize that, that the government of the Republic of Zambia through the Ministry of Health, is committed to provide quality and affordable health solutions. I, Akia Kalamori, just stand before you, before you today, proposing to the motion that states, as I quote, HIV self-testing, is it an effective tool or a danger to mankind, end of quotation. HIV self-testing, this is a mechanism in which someone is given a kit of well-organized utensils or tools like this. This person is able to test themselves for the HIV status within 30 minutes at their own convenience time and at their own convenience place. This tool before being given to an individual that individual is going to be subjected to pre-counseling or a talk on HIV. That is to prepare them psychologically for whatever response they are going to receive. Apart from that, the testing is done in two ways. One can do it guided or unguided. The guided testing is done with an aid of an individual who has more knowledge on HIV of his choice or any person that is given a task to do so. And apart from that, this tool has a kit inside that has numbers, hotlines that someone can call. Apart from the hotlines, it also has reflets that someone can refer to. Not only are they written in, in word, but also pictures are given to demonstrate what one can do. Hence, making a mistake, especially with one being given a choice to be guided, is almost zero. But really, what manner of short-sightedness, convenience, this is a very inconsequential intervention. <laughs> One moment. Would this honorable house purport for even a second 
that the main reason why the speaker of this house invited me to this podium was merely because the program said he must. God forbid that must be the case, but I would like this house to believe that the moderator invited me to the podium so that I can communicate, so that I can educate. That, my dear friends, is the big picture. The big picture that Mr. Gaunda spoke about. The big picture. That at one moment we must acknowledge that the primary objective for all manner of HIV testing is so that we can further and improve the quality of human life. That, that in itself is the big picture. The fundamental question here, therefore, is as the first speaker of the opposition, I must, as a matter of right, adopt the motion as has been defined by the proposition. Unfortunately, the proposition have not preferred before this honorable house a motion to adopt. The motion has not been simplified. House of Intellectuals, HIV self-test mechanism is an empowering and innovative way to help more people know their HIV status. Yes. It helps yes. achieve the first of the United Nations 1990 target, of which the first 90 means 90% of the people who do not know the HIV status must know the HIV status. The second 90 means 90% of the people who know the HIV status must be on treatment. And the step 90 means 90% of people who are on treatment must adhere to the treatment. As of intellectuals, HIV self-testing mechanism is an effective tool and is contributing and still can contribute to this global target by reaching first-time testers, people antagonized with HIV, or those who are sexually active. According to the website of the World Health Organization, the 69th World Health Assembly endorsed a new global health public sector for HIV for 2016 to 2021. A problem shared is a problem half solved. Today we present VCT. We have a self testing kit of proposing to this motion which stipulates to articulate HIV self testing mechanism. Is it an app? Is it an effective tool or a danger to mankind? End of quotation. Automatically rules out the aspect of cancelling from VCT, leaving us with VT, which is voluntary cancelling, which in the end rules out the sole purpose of HIV testing, which is not only to know one's status, but for one to be aligned to treatment and get information on how they can live their healthy life. Members of the House, I, should, I cannot go forward without acknowledging the praises of the members of the House of Intellectual, all protocol observed. Yeah. Members of the House, as counseling is one of the most important aspects of testing, we shall look at the steps, uh, the steps involved in counseling, which is pre-counseling, post-counseling, and the actual test. Members of the House, we are well informed that the self-kit testing, self-testing does not allow one to go under through counseling, but what is provided is information on how to use the test kit. Members of the House, Allow me to state that the UNIGATE has set a target that by 2020, 90% of the people infected with HIV and AIDS should know their status. This has led to an increase in the uh, processes which are put in place in order to increase the access for HIV self-testing. HIV self-testing is one mechanism that has been put in place in order to increase access to testing services. Members of the House, there are about uh, 23 countries which have adopted the HIV self-testing policy. These include Kenya, Germany, United States, uh, Mexico, and other countries. The increase in number of people who have uh, adopted these policies simply shows that indeed this is an effective tool and it's not a danger to mankind. They say change is inevitable. But not all change is a good change. And not all change entails growth and advancement. Today we scrutinize a change in form of the HIV self-test kit. As the opposition, our stance is that this change is an example of a change that is not a good change. But before I guide this House of Intellectuals in how it is not a good change, to all the dignitaries in the House, in order of seniority, I pay my gratitude. Now, members of this auditorium, 
Opposing to this motion, our stance is to show how the HIV self-test is a danger to mankind. Let's focus on danger for a little while, shall we? <laughs> danger entails possibility to do harm. So how is this HIV self-test kit a possibility to do harm? Let's focus on the physical harm that may come for it. Quite alright, it is arguably good because of the privacy and the confidentiality, but let us look at the physical harm that comes from this. Remember, the bigger picture that was talked about by the first speaker was that it's not just about knowing your status, what happens thereafter, how are you aligned to care, how are you aligned to medication, that is what is important. So now, person and the organizing committee for organizing this highly and scholarly debate yes. which has brought yes. intellectuals together to this epic event to be to discuss the motions at hand. House of Intellectuals, allow me also to recognize the presence of the director for police monitoring and research center and the members present. The the, the director also for S A the director for society for family, health and members present, and also the staff from higher learning institutions present, highly qualified panel of adjudicators present, the timekeeper, my fellow debaters on both panels present, of course without forgetting the beautiful faces of Mother Zambia. I say sit back, relax. Greetings to you all. My name is Modest Bwada from Lusaka Apex Medical University proposing to the motion which states, and I quote, HIV self-testing mechanism, is it an effective tool or a danger to mankind? Of which I strongly say yes, it is an effective tool and not a danger to mankind. You see, I have begun to doubt the understanding of the proposition of the word effectiveness. I meant to understand that effectiveness means being able to, be, to achieve the intended purpose. And we from the opposition have brought to this house that what we should look at in this debate, in this arena, when we think about HIV self testing is a bigger picture, which is not just to know your status, but to be aligned to care, to be able to get treatment. And we extended the proposition to either accept or refuse that. And since they do not refuse, we assume they are accepted. But what they have not done is to, to convince us then how effective the HIV self test is in achieving that bigger picture that we've brought to the house. Members of the symposium, 20 to 30 years ago, HIV AIDS infection or an HIV AIDS infected person could not sleep, eat, or interact with a healthy person. 20 to 30 years ago, an HIV AIDS infected person could not even use a plate or a cup that has been used or will be used by a healthy person. 20 to 30 years ago, HIV AIDS infection was more or less a death sentence. Now, members of the symposium, time has gone by. Technology has advanced. ARVs have been introduced, and the present situation is an HIV AIDS infected person can live just as happy a life as a healthy person. All they have to do is walk into the clinic, get tested, be aligned to care. That's it. With my own understanding, this HIV self-testing kit that comes to me if it was to come. Because first, <laughs> when, when, I would not just get this health testing kit from anywhere, but from a health provider. For now, as it is a code, the SFH are the ones that are piloting this program. So that means I cannot just go on the street and get this kit and test for myself. No, I'll first go to the health provider who will give me the pre basic information on how to perform the, 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 the test. That gives me a, 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 a proper information on how to prepare myself psychologically, <laughs> meaning how be it because confidentiality. Confidentiality is something that when I, 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 I no one will force me to say, show me the results from the test. I'll put them in the package, as I've seen from my well-able speaker, the first one. He has given me the exam. Please pass it on so that I can show them how it is done. Please pass it on. This self-testing kit comes with instructions on this leaflet. I'll read, I understand, then perform my test. Later on, my results, if I'm positive, I'll put them back because there's a referral card that is given to me.
the first event, which was between UNSA and Apex University. I'll start with uh, Apex University. They got 210 points. Please clap for them. With a very, very small margin, UNSA got 214. question our society's functionality, we must first begin by questioning our conduct, our behavior, our very existence. Assembled members of this chamber, what is the essence of politics if not to establish government? What is the essence of religion if not salvation? What is the essence of judgment if not competition? What is the essence of social norms if not to protect, to preserve, to correct, and to harmonize? The female condom protects, preserves, harmonizes and corrects. Where does it conflict these very social norms? For the sake of order, for the sake of order and logic, from the very humblest member of the symposium to the moderator, the whole hierarchy has been recognized in chronological order, or protocol has been observed. <laughs> Allow me to go on further. We start first by demystifying, simplifying the motion. The motion quoting, therefore, in its simplicity as I articulate. The female condom, is it right for the Zambian society? Does it conflict with social norms? End of articulation. Assembled members of the chamber, a social norm is what is considered to be correct in a society, and therefore societies differ from one to the next. What is considered correct here may not necessarily be considered correct in the United States of America. Once we have the ability, that intensity, and of course, the ability to say female condoms conflict with our social norms. Standing in full opposition, allow me just simply say, Oh, protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Observe. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the bond of contention this morning sets, and I quote, female condoms, do they conflict with our social norms? To which we firmly agree to the definition, the redefinition of the motions that was given by the first speaker from the free position. Ladies and gentlemen, A, B, C. This was a strategy that was implemented by the government way back. A stands for abstinence, B stands for B faith, and C stands for conduct. A abstinence. It advocates for a girl child to abstain to marriage. Now, Zambia is a nation with 10 provinces that have been subdivided into different tribes that have got different cultural understandings, traditions, and inclinations. And the common cultural understanding with most traditions is that a female should not have sex before marriage. People cannot accept something that they don't know about. In three seconds of mankind's living on this earth, it has become a threat. Not because of, our, of mankind, but because of ourselves. Hence the need for female condoms. Allow me, members of the House, to take you through my first point, which is gender equality. Why are we, as the proposing delegation, saying gender equality can actually be improvised if the female condom is actually formalized? Members of the House, allow me to say, world statistics show that where you have 10 girls then seven are sexually active. Hence the need for female condoms. Now, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, how is it right by distributing this product in schools, in prisons, in any particular organization for any person of whichever age to access when we know that it will promote promiscuity, it will promote adulterous behavior, and it will promote sexual indulgent behavior among us, even people that are married. A question I leave hanging for the other side. To prove this, allow me to quote an event extract the passage that I quote. 
female condoms are convenient because you do not need a prescription from a doctor or a nurse to get them. There is no age, I repeat. There is no age requirement and you do not need to show your ID. Indeed, seriously, you are saving the Zambian people. Good Samaritan, a court of duty. The female condom does not conflict with our country's social norm because it doesn't alter our, our social practice. The, the procedure still remains the same. Husband and wife use the condom. Wait, okay. They are protected. We still go again. Members of the house. God created man and female. Male and female, he created them. A condom is a condom with a male or female and it shall be fit. It's purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we should take the female condom. If we have water in here and who would love to make sugar solution, what are we going to do? If we add sugar, in a cup like this. Is it going to be sweet? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> but if we add sugar directly, <laughs> pouring it inside, is it going to be sweet? Obviously, yes. So our parents, they are scared that once they introduce us to condoms, but the female folk will start having sexual intercourse. And once they start having sexual intercourse that is not sweet, they will be forced to test sweet sex. And once that, I'll take you later, once that sweet sex is tested, it won't start looking for any pregnancies in our nation. That is contrary to our cultural and social norms. Zambians also believe that society must accept the legal consequences of the female condoms. Does that sound like conflicting social norms? Female condom is not something for us to fear. It is, after all, a blessing to the society. For research proves that women make up almost half of the people infected with HIV AIDS worldwide. And the idea of the female condom draws inspiration from the male condoms. With the understanding that gratitude entails discipline. How then can we say we are safe when these condoms have not been tested? Members of the house, immorality, I go back. These condoms are being distributed in, in high schools, in higher learning institutions. Are we encouraging people that are not married to have sex? Zambia has been declared a Christian nation. Now, I will not base my argument on Christianity alone. I will bring in other religions such as Islamic religions and the Hindu religions. Now, members of the house, these three religions have a meeting point, a focal point of allowing only married people to have sex. Event number two was between Nipa Limon and Nipa, also tightly contested. Uh, Nipa got 185. Wow, well, Nipa Limon got 201 points. So the final will be between the winners. Uh, in one and the winners in two. So the rest of Zambia is going to battle it out with even in odds. And the topic goes even a bit more advanced now. Health sector strategies and policies that Zambia recently launched and the new strategy. So this is the new uh, debate. Thank you very much.